You're watching Hurley Films. Honey, what are we doing? Putting the pool up. Da -da -da -da. It's back. Honey, how much weight have you lost? Um, at least 40 pounds. And she looks so good. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, everybody said something about me, but you've lost more weight and you look better. Oh, thanks. So, it, oh, just, a, it helps if you're just naturally beautiful. It does. So, I've had a lot of questions about the pool. And our pool video has actually been going crazy lately. Like, we've been got tons of views. So, as we're about to start setting it back up again, I wanted to tell you guys some things in hindsight. So, some things in hindsight. Number one, whatever you are putting your pool down on, if you think it's smooth enough, it's not. <laughs> it's not smooth enough. Make sure whatever you do, no matter what, whatever you do, you spend adequate a time, adequate amounts of time, making sure you get it as smooth as possible. We are not doing that again because we're living at the bunkhouse and this is not our permanent home. This is just, you know, hopefully while the house is being built, which we have not started building yet. So that will be a joyous video when I get to share that with you. But the pool, you want the bottom to be as smooth as possible. Um, preferably get some sand, get like uh, maybe three yards of sand and spread it out. And then even if you are feeling crazy, I recommend you just go and rent a compactor from Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that because it will make all the difference in the world because the last thing you want is like that little rough nodule that you keep stepping on while you're swimming in the pool. Number two, make sure whatever you put your pool next to, it's close to how you can get out without making a muddy mess. In our instance, we're putting it right here next to the sidewalk. I would show you more of the pool, but Addie's running around naked. So I can't do that or else I'll get flagged. So make sure your pool is close enough to getting out because there's nothing worse than your kids tracking in a ton of mud every time they go swimming. And when they get in the mud, they get in the pool and then it makes the pool dirty and then you have to vacuum or sweep it or whatever way more. So number two, make sure you are, make sure you got a plan of some kind for getting out of the pool, whether it's tarp, anything get that done first Grab her butt. what would you say is something that you would in hindsight with the pool that you would change um closer to the house shade if possible which this tree will give some shade in the morning and afternoon no like exposed dirt around it like our last one a beautiful green yard to put it up in a beautiful view We need a platform for that. Yeah, nice. if you get really crazy, you can build like a deck. We did something like this last year with a pallet. And so this is all of our stuff that does the filtration and the chlorination. Um, this setup worked really good. And so what this is, is this is an Intex sand filter. I can't remember what the weight is. I'll try to look it up. Um, and post it in the comments. I'm trying to see if there's a model number or something on here. Here we go. The Intex sand filter pump. Model number SF80-1102. This sand filter was awesome. Um, it's still got all of the media inside of it and it's drained. But what's great about this is every time we'd backwash, it's got this little bulb and then you'd run it, backwash it, until this bowl ran clear and then it was done. And what was even better is we got this piece of hose, just this little rubber, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but you can buy it at Home Depot in the pool section and it just lets you backwash the water out. So in this case, we'll run it over there and it'll just run down the hill. And so we never have a big giant muddy mess. This is an Intex salt water chlorinator. And this one worked really well last year um, my goal is I've got some extra metal and wood, so I'm going to try to make like a little house, at least to put a roof over this this year. But this is an Intex, uh, saltwater chlorinator, and the model number on this is, 
Look out, Hurley. Daddy, Let's see. Let's find it. Right there. 19ECO5110. That is this model. Here's another screenshot. But what'd you what'd you find that you want to tell me about so bad? Oh, you found an egg. A robin egg. I don't think that's a robin egg. It's not blue, but it's okay. an egg of some kind of bird. It's weird because it's like black smeared all over it. It's pretty cool. Isn't that crazy that a bird made that? Holy, can I hold it? How are you doing? Good. Are you yes cheese or no cheese? Yes cheese. Yeah. So this setup worked really good. I had a lot of comments on our last video. It's like, how would, would you go back with the same pump? Absolutely. We'd go back with the same sand filter, same chlorinator. Um, you do have to clean the chlorinator, which I need to do before we get this thing running. So I can show you guys that too. Um, we have to get some more salt. We got to get pretty much everything we need to get to get it set up. But we stored, we stored everything in tubs. So we've got all the legs and the elbows are in here. Down in here is all the extra pieces and the top rail pieces. The salt will wear on the metal. So you gotta be aware of this. This will rust eventually. This is about the worst part of it that we have. So it's not really super bad, but it's something to be aware of. If you do regular chlorine, obviously you're not gonna have that problem like you would with the salt. But we got all the hoses. Here's our pipe, our fountain that Hurley and I made last year. Yeah, and we'll hook that back up. Got the vacuum hose, the vacuum head. And then the actual cleaning poles are across the street over there in our shop. I really want to get a robot vacuum this year because that would be awesome. Right, Joe? But so far, so good. We only had one little tiny puncture that I repaired with some flex seal. I'll show you that. We had a little rock under the... Actually, I don't know where it's at now because we kind of twisted the pool. I'll show you that here in a bit when I find it again. But we're gonna go through the setup process and how this works. It's super easy. First thing we gotta do is get all the legs on and all the cross pieces and get it framed up. And then Casey, who is an expert at going around the bottom of the pool, and how do you do it, honey? You start in the middle? Yeah. Oh, it's the knee it. torturing thing. Yeah. It's not knee said. torturing. She said last year that it made it's like, her- It's like putting on a sheet on the top bunk. Yes, it takes lots of skills, lots of skills. Mm -hmm. But um, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna set the camera up on a time lapse and then uh, we'll see what happens. This is a simple process. So there's a top bar that we call a crossbar. Uh, it goes into a T-joint and then the T-joint gets two nails through it that holds the top bar in place. And then you have a son who comes behind you and puts the uh, post in. And you'll notice there's a little strap there that the bottom of it goes through. So it is not a hard process. Um, if you are somebody that's intimidated by doing things like this, you do not need to be intimidated. I mean, literally, we have children helping us do this activity. It is not hard. It's tedious. Don't get me wrong. And when you're doing it when it's hot, it's hot. But it is not hard. What do you got there? Pool. What is that? The last piece. A last nail on the frame. Oh, and when mommy comes back, um, we're all gonna put this nail. Um, Can you get it in the hole? However, um, that thing is supposed to fit in, and then we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna get it like to right there, and then we're gonna go one, two, three, pull, and nail it in. Oh, I'll get it lined up. Hold on. Let me get it lined up. See, I hurt your hand. I'm watching. You have to come do it with us. All right, Hurley. Is it videoing? It's videoing. Okay. One, two, three, pull. Wait, no. One, two. Why is my hand on bottom? <laughs> One, two, two three, three, pull. pull. Yeah. yeah. We did it. Yeah. So as you can see, it's not a complicated process. The hard part now is... You can see the frames got a little lean to it. So now it's this shimmying, shimmying back and forth. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse again, way over here one more time, and we'll see if we can get this shimmied into place. So hindsight is always 2020. 
And looking back on this now, I wish we would have done this a little bit differently, uh, especially with the placement. The pool was not as level as we had hoped, um, but that's just kind of how things work out. We might end up draining it and moving it. We're not sure yet. We're going to see how it plays after a few days. But uh, it's in place now, and the kids want to get in. Okay, so explain what's about to happen. This is the okay. most critical step. So we have to get all these wrinkles out. So we start in the middle. It's really awkward, Yeah, it looks pretty good already. So you start in the middle. And then she goes around in an opposing pattern, just as you see here, and just tries to press the liner out to the edges. <laughs> Do not get in there, okay? okay. And it's already looking pretty good. Where we'll probably have to pull a little bit is, this is a new when we have some, some spots like this that'll have to be kind of kicked out. But as you can see, she's smoothing it out in an even circle, kind of like a crepe. Nice throw. We need to vacuum the pool before we put water in it. I don't think that would work. Mommy? It will work. You're going to bring it to me in a minute. I don't think so. See, it's out! Do we need to pull on this side at all? I can't really do anything from the inside. Yeah, we'll wait till I... All right, you got to get off the ladder. No, get yeah. out. Off the ladder, get out. Get out! Get out! Hold this, Hurley. Hurley, look for the windows. Hi. Hello. Hurley. Yeah. Go get my vacuum out of my room. So, if you have any specific questions about the pool setup, um, go ahead and post them down here, and we will let you know what the best way is. I mean, this is pretty much it. You've you've seen it. It's not really a complicated situ situation. This is one of the most critical key steps because it really does get the wrinkles out. The next step thing is we're gonna do is we're gonna take the water, put it in here, and you just get about an inch and a half or two inches of water, and then you do the same thing again, and that ensures that all of the wrinkles get out of the bottom of the pool. And this is a 52 inch Coleman, in, uh, Coleman pool that we got. This, is, this pool is one year old. Um, and we put it up last year, took it down, and setting it back up for the first time. And for those of you who don't know Casey, the vacuum that's going in the pool right now perfectly explains my wife. So as you can see, it's all flat. It looks really awesome. And the, the last pieces that she has to do are just right here at the edge, pushing them up in. And you cannot do this from the outside. And Casey has got, she's got it down. This is the best you've ever done. Aren't you just kind of undoing everything you just did? The answer is yes. Okay, so I've got pieces here so we can start getting it hooked up. Um, I am hoping that I can get some other pieces for a video that I saw last year that made hooking up these hoses way easier. Um, and I gotta find the part. If I can find the part, I plan on making another video because it will revolutionize the way you do hoses. It will be awesome. So we got some parts to put in, so I'm gonna put these parts and pieces in. And uh, if you guys want me to, I can go over the setup later on how we got everything hooked up. But uh, yeah, now it's just kind of a waiting game, letting the uh, pool fill up. So after a season, this is one of the, I don't know what they call it, but this is one of the elements that charges the water 
uh, when you have a salt water chlorinator and you can see all the salt buildup that happens over time. And so what's required of this is just to clean it up. Um, I've got some little gentle, like some nylon brushes and you have to clean these probably about once a month. You turn off the system and you get it out, run it under some water. And right now it's been sitting for a year. So it's actually pretty easy to clean. So, but the rest of this just gets kind of chipped out. It just kind of crumbles. I mean, it's literally just salt. Uh, I think mostly don't quote me on that. Not a scientist, but these just get cleaned up and these convert the salt into chlorine inside of your pool pretty cool and it's a lot more easy on the skin a little bit less uh, when you have a very blonde haired girl this kind of prevents her from having green hair all summer so we really like the uh, saltwater chlorinator I thought about separating this video into two parts uh, because I mean we are literally at the 15 minute mark in this video right now but I uh I just don't want to separate it <laughs> if you're here to watch this pool video uh, I assume you're going to want to see it all the way till its completion. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, no hard feelings there. But uh, this is how the pool's put together, and it does take a few days. So I hope it's something that you're enjoying up to this point. Leave a thumbs up if you Good are. Good morning, YouTube. It's about uh, 1045 the next morning. Um, been working and doing some stuff today. Thought I'd come check out the pool. And you can see it's been filling up all night, and it's about halfway. What's great is you can tell how unlevel things are. Like when you think things are actually level, you can see that window, how we're about two inches below. And this window, we're about six inches below. So definitely not level, but for this year, it'll work just fine. It doesn't have to be completely full up to the brim. This is kind of temporary. You know, we obviously we don't live here permanently, um, but we did notice something that is a major bummer. If you listen as I start to walk this way, we have, we've got a leak. That is a bummer. I did replace uh, a seal, not a seal, I sealed a hole that I knew we had, but clearly there's either that seal's not working or there's another pinhead hole. Like that's what's crazy about these pools is if you have the tiniest hole, it will leak and it will cause some issues. So I need to do some research uh, this afternoon on figuring out how to identify leaks in the pool. Um, and then we'll get them sealed and we'll be good to go. But this is a part of pool ownership. When it's a above ground pool, the ground is what the ground is. So hopefully it's not seams, hopefully it's whatever, but definitely, what caused the leaks is poor substrate from the first year's application. It's got nothing to do with the quality of this pool. This pool is a nice pool, but last year I know we had some rocks and some things that were under the ground that caused issues and you're just paying for it now. So it goes back to the first thing that I said yesterday when I talked about the pool. It's not going to be level enough. One, as you can see here, Make sure it's level. Get yourself a transit level. Get I don't know what. Make sure it's perfectly level. Number two, check for anything and everything. We went over this spot with a rake. We, we, we walked it together as a family, looked for rocks, looked for pine cones, looked for everything. It will pay dividends if you get, get it right. All right, two days later. It's morning, bright and early, and I have got a... Uh, patch kit because today we need to get into the pool which is gonna be freezing first thing we're gonna do let me show you we've got some blue dye now this I've got some goggles and a snorkel and I'm gonna go down to the spot that I'm pretty sure I know where the leak is and we're gonna squirt a small amount of this blue dye and see if it travels into the hole that I am almost positive is there. Once we confirm that, we will take this patch kit. So we have some vinyl, some adhesive, some underwater adhesive, a little applicator. And we're going to put the adhesive onto this, app, this piece here. And we're gonna let it set for a minute or two. Then we're going to fold it up like this. 
and then go into the water, place it onto the hole, and then not touch it for the day. That's how it works. So let's get going. Obviously, I can't take you underwater with me, but I will let you know uh, what I find out with this dye. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that is refreshing. Okay, <clears throat> the blue dye has determined that the spot that I thought was leaking is the actual spot that is leaking. I pulled the flex steel tape off so I could actually get really close to the hole and dropped a dot of dye and it almost immediately disappeared. So that is where it was leaking. And when I would push it around the square piece, which is another key, when you're doing your patches, don't do squares because squares, the edges will begin to peel up. Okay, so here's our patch. You can see it's a circle. I've got the, Casey helped me just now get the, uh, the glue on it. So now I'm gonna take it down to the bottom and put it on the spot and try to get the air bubbles out, so. Mm. I got scuba gear in there. So. <laughs> I think his snorkel is too low. <laughs> All right, we're gonna call that one a practice run. All right, so let's try this again. Again, we've got our circle. All right, honey. What went wrong last time? Last time uh, I dropped it in the pool prematurely and I don't think I had enough of this glue on it. So we're gonna really, really glue it up this time. Get everything all the way to the edges. It's kind of like making a pizza. We're going to kind of fold it up on itself a little, just like this. All right, the patch hasn't been applied. I don't know how much of that you guys saw or not, um, but the patch has been applied. <laughs> now it's time to turn the water back on, let the pool keep filling up. And at this point, only time will tell. It's on. All right, so like I said, the pool is a... Oh, you're salty. <laughs> what flavor is it? The pool is a 10,700 gallon pool. So in order to get the water up to the right salinity of 2,400 to 3,000 grains per gallon, we have to put in eight bags of salt. And these are 40 pound bags each. And you can see this is just, just regular old pool salt. Nothing's fancy, but I usually like to walk around in a circle and get the, the blender going. And that's all. For, for later. Later it'll shade the whole pool. And even though the math says eight bags of salt, what we'll actually do is put in seven. So when we start to run the chlorinator or the salt converter, whatever I guess it's called. We don't want to have too much salt because then it won't work. So we're going to put seven bags in and then adjust from there. 
Seems like one bag's worth wouldn't be enough adjustment. We'll check back in in the next two days. It's and now we just soak in the brine. Hey, Hurley, how is it? Great. It is? Yes. How is it, Joe? Great. I think you got the wrong tubes. <laughs> All right, so here's the, here's the two uh, electrodes that are now cleaned up and ready. You can see I got all the scale out and they go back into here. The next thing we have to do is we have to prime the sand filter. The easiest way to do that is just unhook the intake from the pump and fill the sand filter full of water. The sand filter's primed. Uh, we let the pool fill overnight and then we had a giant rainstorm come through, which I got some of this lightning. Uh, it was quite a light show, super cool, but the pool got full. Very, very full. It's on the high flyer. All right, let me see. That's a high flyer. So day three, as you can see, I uh, we may have overfilled a little bit. That's okay. This is what happens when you have your pool out of order. So you can see that definitely lower on this side it starts to lean this way we're well within the five inch margin so it's okay but it just doesn't look the best and it, it's anyway that being said today is father's day and uncle austin has got the uh his new father's day gift out what did you get Blackstone 36 inch four burn griddle, baby. Blackstone. And so we're gonna cook some shish kebabs without the shish, shisks or the bobs. I'm not sure. I got some chicken, some fowl, onions, peppers, mushrooms. It's gonna be a good day. Nice and cool weather. Super cool weather especially up in front of that grill. We got all the stuff. We got the toys are out, the pool's open, family's on their way out. Casey's inside. I'm sure everybody wants to see Casey. She's why everybody actually watches the channel. And she's gone. Oh, there she is. She's in her new swimsuit and cover up. It looks good. So she's got it all decorated for Father's Day in the thing I love most which is watermelon. Was, Not really, I hate watermelon, but it's for everybody. It was one of the least feminine ones. Like it was the least feminine one. So look, look at all the decorations. Watermelon's neutral. Look, look at all the decorations. So anything that you want to tell everybody about your Father's Day today? Oh, I have the best husband ever and he's the best father ever. Father's Day is always special for us um, I always think about Casey on Father's Day because her dad, how many years ago now? Six. Her dad died about six years ago from uh, esophageal cancer. And so I always think about how Casey's dad is getting the ultimate Father's Day every year mm -hmm. because he's getting to party with the father. And so uh, I always think about him on Father's Day. My dad's out here, he's coming in from the city, and I've got something to show you. We'll have to show them our new neighbors mm -hmm. here sometime soon. We haven't done that yet. But uh, that concludes the pool video. If you uh, have any questions for us about what we would do differently, uh, any questions about this pool specifically, let us know, because we this is our second year using it, and it's working good. The kids love it, so. Uh, Next the, year we'll have it in ground. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, let's work on getting a house first and then we can go from there. But uh, I hope this video uh, was enjoyable for you guys. Uh, remember that even if your Father's Day isn't going like you want it to, you have the ultimate father who loves you and will d did so much for you. I uh, hope that means something to you today. We love you guys. Jesus loves you too. We'll see you on the next video. Hit the thumbs up.